Hi. It's teardown day. I'm going to try and get through this one fairly quickly. It's uh, 11 o'clock at night. It's been a long day, but wanted to get this one in. Got here this uh, garage door closer. It was on clearance. I had no idea what it was, but I grabbed it anyways. Uh, took a quick look, and basically you have this unit here that you replace your uh, your standard push-button switch uh, for your garage door opener. You replace it with this unit here, and uh, then this here, you pop a couple batteries into this, you mount it on your garage door, and then it transmits a signal to let this unit know whether or not your garage door is uh, open or closed. So you hit the button, door opens as normal, uh, the switch is triggered, this unit here now knows that the door is open little switch here where you can select uh, 2, 5, 10, or 20 minutes. After that time has gone by, if the door is still open and it hasn't been closed, either by hitting the button or using your remote, then boom, closes the door for you. So don't expect a whole heck of a lot in something like this. Uh, you know, there's going to be, well, there's going to be little in, probably very little in here, and there's going to be even less in here. So, uh, We'll start with the uh, even less here, and uh, before I even take it apart, just notice that that slides in and out, but there's no real uh, mechanical clicking, so I don't think it's a, uh, a mechanical uh, switch in there. And I believe it to be uh, this here for the screws. I believe it to be a hull. Uh, sensor some sort of a magnetic switch Now it's got a uh, cover here For the battery and it looks like it would take standard batteries, but according to the instructions. There is a uh, Lithium cell and if we pop this open you'll find there is with a uh, one of these little tabs here So and That's it and a surprise, yeah, see there's nothing in there that just goes through and pick out one of the uh, screws here, yeah. See there's a, so there's a magnet in there, so it is a, uh, some type of a hull switch. And we got one screw on the inside holding the PCB in. But that's most certainly uh, the hole, and it just uh, sends back here to this IC that does the uh, most of the magic. That'll handle the encoding of some sort. It's uh, uh, encoder decoder, so that you can deal with uh, interference a little bit uh, easier. A few bits here, but uh, this here is obviously the uh, going to be the transmitter. So if we take a look at uh, this here, then we flip it over. We've got antenna coiled up and uh, this here it's a fairly simple circuit I'll have to uh, see if I can find pictures of the module but that reminds me an awful lot of a uh, uh, Chinese made uh, modules that I've bought in the past uh, some RF modules they are advertised as an Arduino uh, uh, module, uh, RF module, but they are, uh, it's just a real simple, uh, transmitter receiver pair that you can pick up for a few dollars off of eBay. And that's what that's sort of reminding me of. Uh, uh, I'm just going to quickly slap this, uh, back together so I don't lose the parts. So, uh, let's take a look in this guy here. Don't expect a, a whole heck of a lot. There'll probably be, um, well, not probably. There will be a uh, matching uh, RF receiver to match that uh, transmitter. And uh, I'm going to go out and say there's probably going to be a small microcontroller, a little 8-bit uh, micro doing the timing. It's not terribly complex, but uh, they're extremely cheap, so that's probably the easiest way to... Uh, to go about solving a problem like that. Now it would be interesting to see with the uh, 
with the controller, uh, less pins, of course, is uh, cheaper. And uh, it's not like you need a, a large device with a lot of memory to accomplish what this thing does. Um, but there is, you know, you do have this time selection switch, three buttons. You're going to have the input from the... Uh, the RF and then it's got an output uh, to here. I'm guessing it'll just be a relay to, uh, to simulate a mechanical uh, button press there. So, uh, gonna undo these screws. So there's a fair number of uh, I/O uh, pins required. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what kind of techniques they've gone and used. Um, I'm guessing that the RF module will be wired right into one of the pins. Uh, your output relay probably will be. And um, the inputs might use something like a um, an R2R ladder and then be read by the uh, by analog input if there is an AD uh, converter. But I mean, you don't need high accuracy for something like that. So it could be a real cheap one that they slap in. Some of these microcontrollers are dirt cheap with uh, crappy uh, analog to digital converters. So sure enough, there's the, um, there it is. There's the module right there. So that'll be the uh, RF receiver. And uh, I'll have to look up what this is called, this technique here. Uh, but Basically, you got like a bunch of through-hole vias there, and then the board is milled right through it. So you can just mount it, uh, solder it on like a surface mount part. Um, don't know how well it's going to show up here, but I'll just poke at that. Hopefully you can see there. So there is a uh, little bodge wire they got running around from there, and then this red one here. Let me just poke around at this here a bit, uh, this piece of heat shrink. And yeah, there's just uh, a single resistor inside of there. Not terribly exciting. Uh, the RF was on the other side and I'm seeing two small dip packages. So I'm guessing one of those will be a microcontroller. Uh, pay attention here. Yeah, it's not gonna show up. And then this here. Uh, yeah, that's a microcontroller. It is a small Atmel. Atmel 520, and I can't read the rest of it. There's a uh, a scratch through it, through the top of the case, so I can't make out what it says. And I'm going to watch where I'm holding the board here. Uh, so it's a little difficult trying to film and uh, work at the same time. So yeah, there's not a whole heck of a lot. There's a uh, relay in here. Uh, coils rated for six volts uh, DC. Got a few different diodes in here. Uh, didn't really expect a whole heck of a lot because I expect the RF would be all taken care of there. Um, but, you know, you do have the antenna up here, so there's obviously got to be some tuning going on, uh, I'm guessing, off the board. So it'll be uh, similar to what the receiver was. That'll just be the, the chip there that takes care of all the decoding and does all the little magic. And, uh, yeah, I guess you're, uh, you are going to have some of the RF support, support um, components uh off board here. And a little buzzer. Uh, four diodes, I'm guessing they form some sort of a rectifier. And then here's, yeah, that multi way switch. So they must be using, uh, like I had said earlier, some sort of R2R ladder would be my guess to, uh, to get the input because you're going to have power at ground. So that only leaves you with six pins left. You've got. Uh, your input from the radio module. We'll assume that it's just, uh, the micro just listens to it. It's probably a serial stream coming out. Um, 
So you're going to have at least one pin going there, uh, one to control this relay. So now you're down to four and you've got three push buttons and a, uh, what is that, a four-way uh, slide switch. Uh, so if I was going to recycle this, I would, uh, I'd probably try and find a way to incorporate or, or use the circuit as is. Um, just looking at the board here and I'm not seeing on it anywhere um, a bunch of test points or a header or anything maybe an unpopulated pin header there's nothing like that to uh, to come back into this chip here to uh, for programming not a whole heck of a lot pretty simple device didn't expect a lot but Eh, I guess I got a dollar's uh, worth of entertainment out of ripping it apart. And, uh, I don't know, hopefully uh, you did too. Okay, well, until next time.